Hello, I'm Dr. Annalene Weston, Dental Legal Consultant at Dental Protection. Welcome to Risk Bites, a series of podcasts created specifically for dental practitioners in Australia. Risk Bites looks at the key dental legal risks and issues affecting dental practitioners across Australia and provides helpful advice and guidance on how to steer clear of them, leaving you free to provide safe and high quality dental care for your patients. In this edition, I'm going to be talking with my colleague, Kristen trafford Weisel about a commonly asked subject, which is indemnity insurance. So Kristen, what is indemnity and why do we need it anyway? A fair question indeed, Annalene. And now I know there are quite a few people out there. And if I'm honest, I was somewhat like this before I ventured into my role with dental protection. In my case, I took out my indemnity with my free policy when I was at university And then I didn't really think very much about it again after that and simply renewed my policy each year. Now, you see, back in those days for oral health therapists, professional indemnity wasn't actually a requirement, though I thought it seemed like a pretty smart option to take up. These days, as you're likely aware, having appropriate professional indemnity insurance is a requirement of our registration. This is set out in our overarching and all-encompassing Dental Board of Australia Code of Conduct. In section 8.5, which states that practitioners have a statutory requirement to ensure that practice is appropriately covered by professional indemnity insurance. And we then directed to the board's professional indemnity insurance registration standard. Yes, and as is often the case, Kristen, we find it's not just one key dental board document in isolation, but multiple documents which overlay each other and need to be considered. That's right. So now, the Dental Board of Australia Registration Standard, Professional Indemnity Insurance Arrangements 2016, is the more detailed document about our requirement for professional indemnity. In the first instance, this document defines what a professional indemnity insurance arrangement is, in that it means arrangements that secure for the practitioner's professional practice as insurance against civil liability incurred by or loss arising from a claim that is made as a result of negligent act, error or omission in the conduct of the practitioner. This type of insurance is available to practitioners and organisations across a range of industries and covers the costs and expenses of defending a legal claim, as well as any damages payable. Some government organisations, under policies of their own government, are insured for the same range of matters. The standard also sets out the Dental Board's requirements for professional indemnity arrangements. This includes the information relating to who the standard applies to, which is all registered dental practitioners, except those with a student or non-practicing registration, what you must do, including what your professional indemnity insurance must cover, the amount of cover, ensuring that you take out adequate and appropriate insurance or professional indemnity, if there are any exemptions, and this issue is summed up quite succinctly in that there are no exemptions to the standard. What does this mean for me? When you apply for registration, when you renew your registration, during your period of registration, providing evidence of your professional indemnity, and also an area that many may not consider what to do when you cease practice. Lastly, it also sets out what happens if I don't meet the standard. And the national law establishes the possible consequences of practicing without appropriate professional indemnity insurance. That seems quite far-reaching. So what are the other resources about this then, Kristen? There is also a page on the APRA website containing information about the standard, including additional resources such as a fact sheet and common frequently asked questions. So as we discussed, we agree to abide by all these guidelines and standards every year as we work through the paperwork and acknowledgement statements as we renew our registration with the Dental Board. So please do ensure you're familiar with this information and your obligations. So is that all professional indemnity is then, a requirement of our registration? Or is it that and so much more? It really is so much more. If you've ever been to any of Dental Protection's previous continuing professional education offerings, you will likely be familiar with some information about Dental Protection. Dental Protection is in fact the world's leading protection organisation for dentists and dental care professionals. As a not-for-profit mutual organisation, we protect and support the professional interests of tens of thousands of dental members around the world. Membership with Dental Protection provides access to expert advice and support, and depending on the type of membership required, 
may also be connected with the right to request indemnity for complaints or claims arising from your professional practice. Beyond just support for clinical negligence, membership can also protect you in many ways you might not expect, with the right to request advice and legal assistance for matters such as complaints to the regulator, criminal investigations, coroner's inquests or disciplinary proceedings. More than this though, and this is connected directly with Dental Protection's core philosophy, we're there to support you in the safe practice of dentistry by helping to avert problems in the first place, which is part of why we're here now, listening to this podcast series. So with all that information in mind, Kristen, let's break down that statement so we can tease out the important points and see if we can get an understanding on what indemnity is and why it is so important. Absolutely. And as I touched on earlier, and as outlined in the Professional Indemnity Insurance Arrangements Standard, your professional indemnity is there to support you in claims of clinical negligence. This, in fact, may be the first thing that you think of when you think of why we need professional indemnity. As a whole, and rightly so, people are terrified of being sued. So in the event that you open your mailbox, or perhaps more commonly these days, your inbox, and see that dreaded letter from a solicitor, then your policy can respond to assist you where appropriate, such as engaging a solicitor on your behalf to assist in your defence. But what other things can your policy assist you with? Well, as I touched on earlier, your professional indemnifier can assist in responding to other matters, such as tribunals, investigations regarding claiming of fees, criminal investigations and notifications regarding you or your practice to the regulator. And this is in fact where we spend a substantial amount of our time helping our members, as we assist you in protecting both your reputation and professional registration. Now, the receipt of these types of official documentation can be a distressing and upsetting experience for us as healthcare providers, and not something that anyone wants to go through, which is why I mentioned our focus on supporting you in the safe practice of dentistry by helping to avert problems in the first place. And of course, this is where the additional and what we see as a huge benefit of having your indemnity insurance with dental protection lies, as we provide advice and collegiate support to our members. Yes, so broadly, a lot of the mentioned issues may have in fact started as a patient complaint to you, the front reception, your dental assistant, and then it's worked its way up from there. So with this in mind, you can likely see how helpful it can be to have access to colleagues with experience in this area for you to contact and talk through issues relating to practice and complaints and to help resolve them or provide guidance to assist you resolve issues at the low level so the little stuff doesn't become the big stuff. Importantly and reassuringly, the advisory team that are available to you are all dentally trained so they understand the issues you're facing in practice and what this means. So what else can your indemnity with dental protection assist you that you may not be aware of? As part of that support in safe practice, dental protection endeavours to assist you with risk management support, such as professional education. Dental protection provides large amounts of free CPD to members, such as our online education resource PRISM. PRISM has over 40 hours of free CPD and is constantly updated. This is obviously valuable for registration requirements, as well as in the event of conditions being placed by the board, which can often entail necessary education in soft skills, such as appropriate record keeping, consent or communication. This education also extends to our webinar series, lecture series and workshops, which were available face-to-face pre-COVID. A number of hard publications, such as RiskWise and TeamWise, And we also have, as I'm sure you're aware, the Dental Protection Podcast Series, which we're listening to now, which includes risk bites, case matters and risk matters, assisting practitioners in the provision of safe dental care. Part of the focus of providing safe care is to also focus on self-care. This area has come to the forefront recently with practitioners battling through some difficult times and how this can impact on us personally and professionally. As part of Dental Protection's ongoing commitment to positively influence the well-being of our members, we've taken steps by launching our Wellbeing Hub available on our website. This service endeavours to support our members to take positive steps for their well-being with free access to counselling, a raft of resources, podcasts and webinars, as well as our well-being app eCare from ICAS. 
Yeah, burnout's a real issue within the dental industry and can affect not only our personal relationship, but also those with our colleagues and staff and our ability to respond in times of stress, such as patient complaints. That's right. So overall, professional indemnity insurance arrangements are in place initially as a requirement of our registration to assist you, the healthcare provider, and also the patients in times where things may have not gone to plan and a patient may have been harmed or in matters of your defence. But in reality, it can encompass so much more. By providing that contact and support to assist you in times of stress and confusion, responding to patient complaints, which as we can all appreciate, can be confronting and difficult to navigate, assisting in resolving these matters in the first instance, and further in assisting you with the provision of risk management advice and education and self-care. Thank you so much, Kristen, for that relevant and helpful content. And thank you all for listening. We do hope this podcast was helpful to you and we look forward to sharing more guidance with you in the future. If you like Dental Protection Podcasts and you'd like to hear more, please subscribe and leave a review.